Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We focus exclusively on spirituality, Vedanta, and Sanatana Dharma. Please subscribe our channel for the mystical meanings of these scriptures and daily satsang. Our humble prostrations to all pervading Brahman or God, our worshipful Guruji, Swami Jyotirmayananda Ji Maharaj, all sages and scriptures, and to the divinity in each of you. We are currently exploring the scripture Mysticism of Mahabharata, commentaries by <coughs> Sri Swami Jyotirmayananda, and narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilananda. In today's episode, we will study the deceiving of Shalya. While continuing to work for a peaceful settlement of their differences with the Kauravas, the Pandavas continued to send messengers to the rulers of various kingdoms, inviting them to fight on their side if war became inevitable. One such message, messenger was sent to King Shalya, who was the brother of Madri, the mother of Nakul and Sahadeva. Eager to be of assistance, Shalya collected a vast army and began marching towards Upaplavya. When Duryodhana found out from his secret agents that Shalya was going towards the Pandavas to put his army at their disposal, he concocted an underhanded scheme to bring Shalya's support to the Kauravas instead. So he built elegant rest houses along the route Shalya would be following and arranged for the comfort and retirement entertainment of the king and his men in a most splendid manner. Shalya was so eager to reach the Pandavas that he did not take the time to find out who had provided all this comfort for him. He simply assumed that it was provided by the Pandavas. When Shalya was approaching Upalavya, he said, let Yudhishthira be called. I am so pleased with him for the way he has welcomed me and I want to give him a reward. Alerted about this by his servant, Duryodhana came to Shalya and said, it is I who arranged for your welcome throughout your journey, not Yudhishthira. You are related to the Korvas as well and we humbly beseech you to help us. Shalya said, I am indeed very pleased with you. Tell me what you want me to do and I will do it. Duryodhana replied, in the forthcoming battle against the Pandavas, may you, when needed, become the commander general of my army. People in those days deeply honored their word. And so Shalya had no choice but to commit his assistance to Duryodhana. Agreeing to that, he asked only for a short visit with Yudhishthira to explain what had happened. Arriving at the camp of the Pandavas, Shalya was warmly welcomed by his nephews. When Yudhishthira heard how Shalya had become bound by his words to help the Kauravas, he did not become upset, even though that vast army could have been of great help to the Pandavas. Yudhishthira acknowledged that Shalya must follow the rules of Dharma and honor his promise. However, he said, O oh, uncle, I will request you to help us in another way. Though not with your army, not with force. In the course of the battle, when Karna prepares to fight with Arjuna, he will request you to be his chariot driver because you are considered equal to Krishna in that skill. Therefore, when you perform that duty for Karna, try to discourage him by saying things that will consistently undermine his self-confidence. That will be help enough. Shalya agreed, saying, I will do what you have requested. Physically, I and my army must fight against the Pandavas, but I will help you carry out that psychological strategy. When I drive Karna's chariot, I will say things that will discourage him. And in that way, I will bring down his spirits so that he can be killed by you. You and the Pandavas are going to be victorious because you are on the path of dharma or virtue. Not even one needle point of land is the next episode. Sanjay was sent by King Dhritarashtra to Upaplavya to try to avoid the war. The blind king was hoping that his nephews would agree to live in peace despite any unrighteous decisions that Duryodhana might make. 
Due to his forgiving and magnanimous nature, Yudhishthira responded by sending Sanjay back with the message that he and his brothers would agree to peace if they were given just five villages to rule, one for each brother. He would accept this humble settlement and forgive all the wrongs previously done to the Pandavas. Remember, 12 years in the forest, one year of incognito, etc. When Sanjay conveyed this message at the royal court in Hastinapur, Duryodhana, despite all advice from Bhishma and his elders, resolutely asserted that not even a needle point of land would be given to the Pandavas, let alone five villages, and he was determined to fight to keep it that way. So you see what happened here. Greed took such greed and anger and animosity, took such mountainous proportions that he would not even want to give a needle point of land, making the war inevitable. During this conference, Karna confirmed his determination to overcome Arjuna, mocking the advice of Bhishma and asserting that he would not fight alongside such a treacherous and senile elder, but would wait to take up arms until after Bhishma was disabled. At this point in the negotiations, Krishna himself embarked on a mission to Hastinapur as a last-minute attempt to avoid war. Although he knew the ultimate futility of such effort, Krishna told the Pandavas that they must make every effort for peace before war was deemed inevitable. So the war, there is no other choice but to have the war and we will study um, this next episode in tomorrow's satsanga. This is Swami Nikhilananda. Om Tatsar.